Thank you, Diane, and what a great day of rejoicing that will be one day. Something to look forward to for us all. Well, welcome um, to you who have come in person for our worship service this morning. Welcome to you also watching online. We're glad that you're here and are, uh, just hope you'll feel a part of our worship as we are gathered here today. It's a glorious day as we gather to sing to the Lord. That's going to be our topic uh, this morning as we uh, look to Scripture and Psalm 96, a wonderful uh, call to worship, a call to uh, sing good things to God. Last week we celebrated Easter and uh, the, the celebration of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Christ, the greatest event in all of history. And so we're just going to build on that as we uh, look at one of the Psalms uh, today. So welcome. Let us stand for our call to worship. Familiar Psalm, Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Father, we gather together to praise you and sing joyfully from our hearts this morning uh, for your greatness to proclaim who you are and the good things that you have done. Father, we just thank you for the privilege of gathering together in worship, and we pray that we will never take that privilege lightly. We're thankful, Father, that those... Um, who can't join us in person, can through technology, can join with us and know that your spirit is, is with us all as we gather in this place. Father, we pray that you will be glorified and your name will be praised. Speak to our hearts, Lord, as we um, look at uh, Psalm 96, and I just pray that you will um, call to attention again your splendor and your grace, your awesomeness, and uh, the many attributes uh, that you have. And uh, I just pray that you will humble us, mold us and shape us, Lord, into the people that you want us to be. Father, we come as, as hurting people, as people struggling in one way or another, um, and we pray for those who need your healing touch. We lift up Davy, Sh Davy Showers and, um, and the doctors working with him and his family, and we pray for your healing hand upon him. Uh, for others, Lord, we just pray for your comfort and for your healing touch. Father, we commit this time to you, and as we do, we join our, our hearts and our voices uh, as we pray the prayer Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, as I said last Sunday, we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a great and wonderful day that was. How awesome it is to be able to celebrate that good news and proclaim it to the world. Well, today we return to our series on Psalms. And so I thought about uh, Psalm 96. And I thought it'd be a good place to, to start with, because it has this command to sing to the Lord. We have many reasons to sing to the Lord. Now, singing has many natural and spiritual benefits. In addition to being something, it's something that we can do through any season of life. Whatever emotion, whatever season, whatever experience you're going through, 
you know, there, there's a song, there's something that can uh, relate to that. So it's something that is always uh, appropriate. Have you ever given much thought to what it takes to sing? Singing truly is a gift from God. Singing is just amazing when you think about it. Somehow we humans are able to push air up through our throats over some flexible, fleshy membranes that vibrate at different speeds, changing the pitch and the sound of our voices. Um, while we intuitively know how to do that, you know, you don't have to think about it. It just kind of comes naturally. You want to sing low, you know how to do that. You want to sing high, you know how to do that. Some of us do that better than others, however. Um, but anyway, at the same time we're doing that, our tongues and our lips and our mouths um, uh, are, are changing to form the words that we are singing. Truly amazing thing if you think about it. Well, the Bible tells us to sing to the Lord 22 different times. The Apostle Paul instructs us in Ephesians 5, 19, to speak to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making music with your heart to the Lord. King David proclaims in Psalm 43, he put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in God. Like David, when we gather together to worship, it's our hope that what we do together, including the singing of new songs, will point others to God who will put their trust faith and their hope and their trust in him. I did an internet search for the benefits of singing, and I found a website called lifehack.org, and it listed 11 good things that can happen when you sing. Let's take a look at this. The benefits of singing from lifehack.org. First, singing releases endorphins and, and oxytocin, um, when, we, when we sing. Oxytocin is also known as the cuddle hormone because it's released when people snuggle with one another. Oxytocin is known to decrease stress and anxiety. And both of these hormones can help make you feel better in general and decrease any pain that you might be feeling. So one benefit. Two, second benefit is singing improves your IQ. Studies have found that singers and musicians typically have higher IQs than non-musicians. Singing can improve your overall brain function and help you think a little clearer. And I told Ada this morning, I need to sing a little bit, mo a little bit more. Singing leads to a longer life. A joint Yale and Harvard study showed that for people living in New Haven, Connecticut, choral singing increased life expectancy. Four, singing lowers your blood pressure. Case studies have shown that singing can have a calming effect. Hospital patients often see their blood pressure lower as they sing hymns with their visitors. Five, singing tones up your facial, facial muscles, your diaphragm, and your intercostal muscles. The proper technique of singing from the diaphragm can strengthen your abdomen and your back muscles. You also exercise your facial muscles in unique ways when you sing, which can help your face look more energetic and lively. Your intercostal muscles, I had to look this up. I didn't know there was such a thing. But they're a group of muscles uh, that, that control your, your ribs uh, and help your chest wall move back and forth. And so you, you work out those muscles when you sing. 
Six, singing increases empathy and understanding between cultures. Music can help us feel connected to all of humanity, even across, uh, across cultural divides. Singing songs that oriented from other cultures can give us a new appreciation for those cultures and can help us emphasize, um, empathize with others. Just, you know, I've had a, uh, a couple of wonderful examples that came to mind in thinking about this. Um, one was in, in Ethiopia and then in uh, Jamaica. If you ever get a chance to worship in a cross-cultural um, uh, situation, please do that. But uh, the joy, um, the, the services were like three-hour long services, no air conditioning, no padded pews. Um, but it was joyful worship. And, and it, it, it helped me feel connected, even though I couldn't understand one word that they were saying, it helped draw me closer to God and closer uh, to them because of the joy of, of singing um, and, and worshiping uh, together. And recently, just this past week, I saw a video of, of the church I went to and in Ethiopia, just the, the joyful singing and moving and, and praising the Lord. Uh, just a wonderful feeling, a wonderful feeling of connection. Seven, singing develops the lungs and gives you a better posture. I'm sure, you, Tyler, you tell your students to sit up and, you know, stand straight and as you sing, because if, as you do that, it helps you to, to sing better. Singing improves your lung capacity and helps you to breathe a little easier. Eight, singing brings people together and it creates a sense of community. Singing in a choir or, or singing any, in any sort of group environment with other people can be fun and, and it can be a bonding activity. It gives you an opportunity to share that experience with another group of people. And there have been uh, several studies that have shown that singing in a choir decreased depression among many adults. I'm sure some of our former choir members and, and our praise team um, can attest to this. Nine, singing can help patients with Parkinson's disease. There have been numerous studies that have shown how singing may increase the, increase the health of patients suffering from Parkinson's disease. Singing may improve vocal and swallowing control in some of the patients. There have even been studies that suggest that music can help, help, can help patients with their balance. 10, singing improves your memory. Even if we can't always remember all the, the lyrics to your local and your favorite songs, um, there's no question that, that singing helps us to um, use and improve our memory. Um, it, it does it in ways that we wouldn't ordinarily do that. So um, that's one excellent way to keep your brain functioning as you age, as we age. Um, music is a wonderful way to help us memorize Scripture. A lot of the praise songs are simply Scripture put to music. And people say, well, I can't memorize Scripture and yet they can sing these songs and memorize uh, these songs. Uh, we use it in, for children to help them memorize different things. We put it to music, and it's easier to memorize. So then, uh, 11, singing can boost your immunity. Interesting thought. Uh, and we all know uh, how important a strong immune system is in these days. So singing goes with every season. And I've just read a list about the world's rationale for singing, some good positive things that happen from a worldly perspective when we sing. Now, Psalm 96 gives us a biblical rationale for singing. Let's read this wonderful invitation to worship from Psalm 96 to the king of the earth. Sing a new song to the Lord. Let the whole earth sing to the Lord. 
Sing to the Lord, bless his name, proclaim his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wondrous works from all peoples. For the Lord is great and highly praised. He is feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are worthless idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you family of peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Bring an offering and enter his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be shaken. He judges the peoples fairly. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and all that fills it resound. Let the fields and everything in them celebrate. And then all the trees of the forest will shout for joy. Before the Lord, he is, for he is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with faithfulness. Wow, may God add his blessing and his understanding to this, his holy word, and who he is and what he has done. Well, I titled this sermon, Sing to the Lord, because the first three verses say, sing, to the, sing a new song to the Lord. It, it's good to learn new songs to sing to the Lord because our God is an infinite God, and there are an infinite number of ways to praise this infinite God. Let the whole earth sing to the Lord. And third, sing to the Lord, bless his name, because he is worthy. It's a triple command to sing to the Lord, so we better pay attention. The psalm doesn't list the author, but it's either David or Asaph, because almost all the words in this psalm can be found in the song sung by David and Asaph when they're bringing the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem, as recorded in 1 Chronicles 16. And so the whole song was written to tell people, this is what we do when we gather together. We sing. But why do we sing? Well, Lifehack can give us 11 reasons everyone should sing. But this psalm gives us 12 reasons why everyone should sing to the Lord. One, one, one more reason. Well, the, let's go through these. Well, the first reason it gives, why do we sing? Because God asks us to. Sing me a new song, God says. Everybody ought to sing to me, he says in verse 1. You ought to sing to let them know about the salvation he offers. You ought to sing and declare all the things, the great things that he has done. If his simple request isn't enough, it isn't enough verse 4 gives us a second reason why we sing. It says, you ought to sing because God is great. He is feared above all gods, and you ought to worship him because he is real. All the other gods are just idols, just dead pieces of wood or clay or silver. They can't know you. They can't help you. They can't respond to your prayers or change your circumstances. But God can, and he does. So open your mouth and let your vocal cords loose. Sing to the Lord a new song. Verse 5 says, and you want another reason to sing? Just look up. Look at the sky. 
go outside tonight and look at the stars. This past week has been, we've had a lot of really clear skies, and, and I just love walking my dog and, and just looking up at the stars and, and just see the, the beauty of the heavens. They declare the glory of God. God made those, and he calls them each by name. Because he made the heavens. Job 38, 7 says, tells us that while the creation was happening, the morning stars sang together and the angels shouted for joy. And so we ought to sing because the stars of the heavens sing. Verse 6 says we ought to sing to him because he is beautiful. His splendor and majesty are before him. So what does this mean? This means this creator God who created our being is incredible. He has this aura that radiates around him because he is so beautiful. And whenever in in Scripture we see these appearances of God, these uh, theophanies, what they call, they're not direct appearances, but whenever we have these encounters with God, there's this immediate bowing down, this this humbling, this recognition that God is God and I am not. Uh, So there's this aura of this great God. And so we ought to sing about that. Another reason we ought to sing is because God is here. He's here, right here in this sanctuary, wherever two or three are gathered uh, in his name. He's here among us. God is here this morning. God, as you're watching on TV, God's in your home where you are. This place, this sanctuary was, was built so we can gather together and worship and sing praises to God. And he inhabits the praises of his people. We ought to sing seven because singing is a means of worship. When we sing in here, it's not like singing a a country song like you hear on the radio. We're not singing about lost love and drinking beer in the back of our pickup trucks or, or whatever you do in a country music song, but we're singing about the gratefulness of an awesome God and the great things that he has done for us. So we sing because he reigns. God is sovereign. He's our creator and our Lord. He made us. He's large and he's in charge. God not only rules over all creation, he inhabits every square inch of it. This God who is king is also our judge. Verse 10 tells us that we ought to sing to him because he judges fairly. He will never treat us unfairly. He will never get mad at us and and, and just get out of control like sometimes parents do and, you know, go over a little bit with our our children. God never does that. He's trustworthy. He's reliable. He's predictable. He's consistent. And we can count on him. We ought to sing to him because of all these reasons. But even if none of these reasons were valid, we ought to sing because we are a part of creation and because all of creation was made to sing. I love the lyrics of verses Uh, 11 and 12. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and all that fills it resound. Let the fields and everything in them celebrate. And then all the trees of the forest will shout for joy. Can you imagine what that will be one day when All of creation shouts. I was thinking when I was um, doing this, uh, preparing this, of having all the dolphins and the whales and the croakers and things in the sea all gathering together in this great uh, worship chorus and and all the corn husk and uh, everything all standing and worshiping God. The trees, you know, as they wave in the breeze singing, 
What a beautiful picture that will be. The heavens were made to sing to God. The sea was made to resound with his praise. The fields, the land, and everything in it were made to celebrate the wonders of our God. Heaven and sea and earth, all of creation, and we're a part of that creation. We were made to praise God and to celebrate him. And if that's not enough, we ought to sing number 11, because he's coming again, from verse 13. The world isn't always going to be the way it is now. We talked about this in our Bible study a little bit last week. And, um, you know, it, there's going to be a change when Christ comes again. One day, King Jesus will return, and he will reign in our presence, and the entire world will know when that happens, and he will rule with justice and righteousness. And when he returns... I, I don't know if we'll, what we'll be able to do. Will we be able to sing? I think maybe we'll just gasp and, and, and stare and, and wonder in awe. Maybe we'll weep. Maybe we'll fall down to our knees in wonder and admiration and in awe. I was reminded of the, of the song I Can Only Imagine by Bart Millard, uh, just to, to quote a verse. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? Or will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. So we ought to sing now because sometime, for a time at least in the future, our lungs probably won't be able to sing and our minds won't be able to form words and our tongues won't be able to pronounce them because he will come in glory and we will see him as he is. We're not to be outdone by life hack. Psalm 96 gives us one more reason we ought to sing. Verse 13 says that when he comes, he will judge the world with righteousness. That means he'll judge rightly and the people, peoples with his faithfulness. Notice it does not say, and the people with faithfulness in this translation. It says peoples with fairness because even, when this, even though when this was written, there was only one people who worshiped the one true God. It was only the Israelites who worshiped that one true God that God had revealed himself to. The writer knew that one day, people from every nation, tribe, um, people, and language would worship the one true God from Revelation 7. And so we ought to sing because he will judge the world. And he'll judge the world with fairness. And he, he'll judge based on the faith in his son, the work of his son that we celebrated last week with his crucifixion, his death, and his resurrection. He died that we might live, that our sins might be forgiven and washed away as far as the east is from the west. So I ask you, have you expressed your, your trust in his only son? Have you believed in what he has done, that he died and rose again for you, for the forgiveness of your sins? Have you done that? And so before we start singing again, would you like to pray? If you haven't ever received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, it's time to do it. There's no time like the present to receive Jesus. Because when he returns, He's going to judge each one of us faithfully, which means he'll judge us according to what we've done. He'll judge us for the things we've said uh, that were true, things that we said that weren't true. He'll judge us for the things we did to help others and for the things we didn't that weren't so helpful. He'll judge us for the things that we did that were selfless. And he'll judge us for the things that were selfish. 
God is going to judge us faithfully, which means he's going to judge us by our actions. We're all going to go through that, that Bema seat of judgment. But the good news is that for everyone who's called on the name of Jesus Christ, when we go through that judgment, he's going to say to us, not guilty, forgiven, for there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And that, my friends, is something to sing about. Let us go to him in prayer. Father, we come before you and we just rejoice in who you are. And Father, we confess that, that we're not always um, looking to, to praise you and, and we don't always see you at work all around us, even though you're always doing things, that sometimes our, our minds are occupied on, on ourselves, and we can only see what we want to see. And so we pray that you will open our eyes to where you're working in the world around us <coughs> and follow that invitation to come along and, and join you. And I pray that as we gather together, that our worship will be joyful and, and praiseworthy and point to you. And I pray our lives will point to you and who you are and the great things that you have done. And I pray that you will be glorified. Thank you, Father, for this privilege we have this morning to gather together, to worship uh, before you, and to sing songs of joy and praises in our hearts. We pray these things. In the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. I hope you sense the awareness of God in this place on this day. Well, take that feeling, take that experience as you go out into your mission field today. And as you go, take your surveys, your Bible surveys. If you've had a chance to fill those out, you can place those in your offering in the offering plates. But go in peace. Love your neighbor and spread this wonderful good news. Amen. Sing.